Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, congratulations. You've made it for your through your first real lab in physics. And you've started to look at the wondrous things of what happens when you have a little dune buggy moving at a constant velocity. All right? Now, our next piece that we're going to talk about is we're going to define some of the words we started throwing around in this lab. All right, you're going to find out that physics is actually very common in the English language. Physics words pop up all the time. Sometimes we use them correctly. Sometimes we don't. So in order to make sure we're all on the same page, we're going to define some of the topics we're going to discuss in this unit and units in the future so that we know exactly what's going on and we know what symbols we use to represent them. And we kind of do some math because we will start doing some math in a little bit, as well as the units that we measure these things in. All right, I'm going to tell you that the units are the most important thing you're going to remember. I'm going to tell you that no matter what throughout the year, the two things you will never see me yield on are the idea that you must draw straight lines when it requires straight lines, and you must include units. And I am happy to fail anyone who forgets to include those two things because I promise they are important because if you do not include them, your answer is fundamentally different than what you meant it to be. All right, now with that warning aside, this beautiful piece of artwork I've created is the front of our packet. So we're actually kind of going out of order. We're going back to the very front page because what we're going to do is we're going to write down some information, all right? And we're going to kind of keep track of exactly what some of the things we talked about mean, all right? Now, of course, in the classroom, I would be able to kind of do a nice call and response, uh, you know, have a discussion. Unfortunately, I can't do that right now. Um, so bear with me because it's going to be a little bit of me lecturing and I do apologize for that. But that's part of how this online learning is going to be, at least right now, until we figure out how we can do some of the other stuff online in person. So, with that being said, we're going to find out that for this first unit, talking about the constant velocity model, an object moving at a constant velocity, we're going to have five things that we care about. All right, five physical quantities that we can measure or calculate. So, let's start with the very first one. Our very first physical quantity, the most important one, well, they're all really important. But the first one that we're going to be able to measure is the position of an object. All right. Now, the position of an object, we're going to have a couple of things. We're going to talk about the description, which is just basically saying what's the definition of position, the symbol that represents the position of an object, and its units. All right. Now, for position, the description or the definition is exactly what you would expect. All right. Basically, it's where I am. So... The position of an object is where it is, but it has to be measured with respect to something, all right? Because remember, if I'm measuring my position, position only matters if I know where it is in reference to something else that I know, all right? So in this case, the position is going to be the distance something is from the origin, all right? Remember, the origin in physics is something that we can define. I can define the origin of motion as anywhere, all right? On a graph, the origin is zero, zero. But literally, in, in the real world, all the origin is just where I'm measuring my position from. All right? Now, another thing that's interesting is that position can be positive or negative. All right? We discussed this a little bit in the lab, and we're going to keep bringing this up throughout the year, is that in physics, positive and negative don't necessarily have the same meaning that they do in a math class. All right? Because some, just because something is negative does not necessarily mean it is less than something that is positive like it would be in math. Instead, it just means it tells us the direction it is relative to the origin, all right? So in this case, positive, if something had a positive position, it probably means it would be in front of the origin, the way we think about it. And if it had a negative position, it would be behind the origin, all right? But it doesn't necessarily mean that if I have a negative position, oh, my, posi my position is much less than everything else, all right? So position is just where I am with respect to the origin. The symbol per position, we're gonna talk about it is an X, all right? And I don't know, it's not because of X marks the spot. I know it can be very confusing because in math class, of course, the main variable we love to use is X. So we want to get comfortable with that. But in physics, to represent position, we just draw an X, all right? Now, because it's a measurement of distance or a where I am, the units are gonna be related to a meter stick. So the units in this case are gonna be meters. All right, so the base units for position are meters. We're going to find out as well, we might be using centimeters as well. But one thing we're going to need to get very comfortable with 
is the idea of switching between units. And we will practice that a little bit later on. All right, and the idea of how can we go between meters and centimeters. Hopefully in chemistry, you saw some of that kind of bouncing back and forth between different kind of orders of magnitude with units of measurement. Uh, don't worry, we're gonna practice it a lot. So do not worry at all if you're like, I don't remember how to do that. So one down, we know what position is, it's where I am with respect to the origin. Next, this is arguably one of the most important things of all that you can measure is the time, all right? And the definition of time, some of us would like to sit there and ponder for the next three years about what time is. There are whole dissertations about time, whether time even exists. Um, I can tell you definitively that in this classroom, it does exist, and its definition is pretty simple. All it is is how long something takes, all right? So for some metaphysical doctorate, his entire dissertation just got condensed into four words. So all time is in this class is how long something takes. We can, of course, easily measure that. We're going to find out the position and time are two of the most important and simple things we can measure in this class. We can do it with just about anything as long as we have a meter stick and we have some sort of stopwatch. So the symbol for time is what you guessed, a lowercase t. All right, so in physics, when we see a lowercase t, it symbolizes the time and the units, the base unit for time is going to be seconds. All right. Now, of course, in science, we do not use the American system of measurement. We're using the metric system. So you're going to see meters, you're going to see seconds and all these wonderful things coming together. So if you're really resistant to that, um, congratulations, you're about to actually, you know, learn what the rest of the world is using. So two down position time. The next one is going to be velocity. All right, now I have not included speed on here because speed kind of gets combined, combined in with velocity in physics. So velocity, as we're gonna find out, is defined as speed with direction, all right? Now, to elaborate on that, what that means is that the velocity of an object is how fast it's going which is the definition of speed. All speed literally is, is how fast am I going? It's what you read on your speedometer. Velocity is taking that and going one step further and saying how fast I'm going with the direction I'm going in, all right? Now, for most of us, what this is gonna look like in here is it's gonna mean that the velocity can be positive or negative. That means it's either moving forward or moving backward. What that would look like in maybe driving your car would be if I was on the interstate and I told you I was driving at 60 miles an hour, that doesn't really, it's not super useful to you. Let's say I'm, let's say you're hanging out in Richmond and I'm in Charlottesville and you're trying to figure out how long it's gonna take me to get there. If I just called you and say, oh yeah, I'm on the interstate 60 miles an hour. Well, that's not super useful because if I'm actually going towards Crozet instead of going towards Richmond, that's a problem. So the velocity would be, oh, I'm going 60 miles an hour and I'm going east. That way I now know how fast I'm going, my speed, and the direction I'm going at. All right, so we're gonna find out in physics, we like to use velocity a lot. It is just speed, how fast I'm going, and the direction I'm going in. The symbol, you probably guessed it if you saw kind of what time is, is going to be a lowercase v. All right, unfortunately, we're gonna find out, some of the symbols make a lot of sense. A lot of the symbols don't make a lot of sense because we're gonna find out that certain letters get stolen by other things. And then for velocity, the units, it's going to be how fast I'm going, all right, in a certain direction. Now, how fast I'm going is just basically, it means how the, num the distance I go in a certain amount of time, which would be the same thing as saying the meters I travel over the amount of seconds it takes to go those meters. So the units are going to be meters per second, all right? They can also be centimeters per second, depending on what kind of unit of measurement you're using for distance or position but velocity is just going to be meters per second, all right? Now, I added kind of a modification for constant velocity because it's something that's so important, we actually wanna kind of include it as its own definition. So if velocity is just speed with direction, all right, or how fast I'm going in a certain direction, constant velocity is just a constant speed with direction, all right? And that's important because we're gonna find out that something moving at a constant velocity and something that actually has a changing velocity are experiencing different things in physics, all right? So just as we're gonna kind of see, as you travel through physics throughout the year, we're almost gonna be pulling back the curtain a little bit more on how reality actually works. 
So right now, our reality is a very simple one. Everything moves in a straight line, and it either moves at a constant velocity or it doesn't. And as we kind of go throughout the year, we're going to see that life is a bit more complicated than that. All right. Now, the symbol for this is a V. Actually, technically for constant velocity, I believe it is, well, that's not true. I'm thinking about something else. I apologize. It's a V. Don't worry about it. You'll find out throughout the year that a lot of times I will stop myself halfway through a sentence, have an argument with myself, and then keep going like nothing happened. This is one of those cases. All right, so four down. Let's go to the last one. So we talked about earlier the idea of distance, okay? And distance, actually, you could, if you wanted to, you could add that in there as a sixth one as well because all distance is is how far I travel. It's just literally how many meter, meters I go from the time I start to the time I stop. Displacement, on the other hand, is a little bit different. If I'm talking about the displacement of an object, what I'm measuring is how much did my position change between the time I started moving and the time I ended moving, all right? Now, why that's different than distance is because if I'm talking about distance, so this is, oh, I forgot, I really, actually made that really thin. So when we're talking about distance, Okay, and let's say we're talking about someone who is driving to Richmond and back, all right? So if I drove all the way to Richmond and I drive all the way back and I asked you, well, how far did you drive? You would probably tell me the distance. You'd say, oh, I probably travel and Richmond's about 70 miles from here. So I drove about 140 miles, okay? But if I was talking about the displacement, if I asked the same question, your answer wouldn't be, oh, I traveled 140 miles. Your answer would be, oh, well, I ended up right back where I start because oh, I had a displacement of zero meters, all right? So displacement only cares about where you start and where you end. Distance cares about how far you went in total, all right? And we're gonna find out that those are two different things that are going to be important for different calculations. All right, but right now we just want to get used to the idea that there's something called displacement and it's literally just the measure of how far I am from where I started. All right, now the unit, or excuse me, the symbol for displacement, because displacement is a change in position, the symbol is an X and a little triangle, or in Greek, we call that a delta. And if you've seen that before in math class, hopefully you know that anytime you see a triangle in front of something, that represents the idea of change. All right, so it is a delta X, which is the same thing as saying the final position minus the starting position, okay? And that's what that delta represents. So if you've never seen that delta before, we're gonna see it over out a couple times throughout the year. We're gonna practice with it, so do not worry if you're like really kind of a little intimidated by it. It's just a little triangle, it doesn't mean any harm. All right, and then of course, because it's a change in position, this is still a measurement of position itself, really. So the unit is still meters or centimeters, all right? So right there, ladies and gentlemen, we have the first five things, the first five physical quantities we are going to measure in this class, the definitions for them, and we're gonna see them pop up throughout the next two units. So we just wanna keep getting comfortable with them. Remember, if you have any questions with these definitions, first off, feel free to look them up online, all right? Don't take what I'm saying as the only like explanation. There are tons of, tons of resources online, Look them up, see what they say about it, because they might give a definition that makes more sense to you than the ones I put on here. But with that being said, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, come to online office hours, or talk to me in class, all right? And otherwise, I'll talk to you later.